Hey folks, Craig here, and today I want to share with you some of my favorite exploration games on the Nintendo Switch. And now I'm using exploration a little colloquially here because I think exploration, exploring, that's just a more of a common term when it comes to video games. But more specifically, I'm talking about sightseeing video games. Games where just taking in the sights is its own reward rather than finding some external bobble or reward. And even more to that point, five out of six of these games don't even have combat. There's no violent conflict. Makes it much easier to see the sights. So here are my six favorite sightseeing games on the Nintendo Switch. First, mostly to get it out of the way, is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Partially because it's the only game on this list with combat and partially because, you know, it's the obvious pick, but what a pick, am I right? I love the vast expanse of Hyrule here. The environment design is just in a class of its own with so many different biomes and a, just a keen artistic eye for lines and slopes that draw the player effort, effortlessly to, toward uh, other points of interest. Even the camera plays a part. It, it just sits at the right height and the right distance to make every moment feel meaningful, cinematic even. Nothing is wasted. Even seemingly empty spaces serve the tempo of the game. They give you time to observe, to orient yourself, and to pursue new things. It's a masterclass in open world design. It's a truly remarkable game full of surprises. Next is an early Switch game called Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. Yonder has no combat. Instead, it relies more on fetch quest type gameplay to move things along. Uh, but to be honest, I found it better to just ignore <laughs> the, those standard gameplay systems, unless absolutely necessary to make progress, because they're janky and they're not very good. But you know what is very good? Wandering. <laughs> the game totally excels at wandering. When I first started playing Yonder, I couldn't comprehend just how massive the game's island is. It's It's deceptively huge. It just keeps going, and without having to worry about health or fighting, it's easier to just shrug off the dull quest and just uh, get lost. Normally, getting lost in a game makes me anxious. I'm desperate to find a landmark or a fast travel point or something like that, but Yonder doesn't make me feel that way. I just want to get lost in its landscapes. And Yonder has this kind of curved, almost fisheye perspective, which for me, at least, made me curious about what was around every corner. My third game on this list is one of my favorites on the Switch, A Short Hike. Like the title plainly says, it's a very brief game, but also very sweet. A Short Hike is about traveling to the summit of a mountain, and there are all these fantastic characters along the way with just terrific, punchy writing. And you can ignore them, but I'd argue that in this case, the characters are absolutely part of the sightseeing experience. They add life to the hike without bogging it down. The island itself is made up of all these twisty, windy, interconnected paths cutting through natural beauty and man-made landmarks. It's all very thoughtfully laid out to the point of never ceding very much camera control as if the game, you know, takes pride in its landscapes and just wants you to take it in to, to appreciate the journey. The fourth game is Haven Park. You play as a little bird constructing and arranging campsites for visitors throughout the park. Connecting the campsites is a map that is, uh, it's actually a lot like a short hike. It's, it's almost exactly like a short hike. The creative Haven Park uh, cited short hike as an explicit inspiration, but it's pretty obvious even without that revelation. So I won't lie, it's a little redundant, but with all the winding paths that I loved in short hike, I love in Haven Park as well. There's a confidence that I just really enjoy and appreciate in this world design. It's handcrafted, authentic, and constantly encouraging uh, you to see what's just around the bend. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend playing a short hike in Haven Park back to back, you know, given how similar they are, you might get burnt out, but it's still a fantastic sightseeing game. The penultimate game on my list is Rhyme, and I'm not 100% sure how I feel about Rhyme as a game, you know, mechanically. It's fine, relying mostly on environmental puzzles and things like that, but it's not remarkable or memorable <laughs> for its gameplay by any means. Mostly... I love the lush natural landscapes and colossal structures. It's absolutely beautiful, and I can't help but constantly root around for a new angle to pan the camera and just drink it all in. Rhyme really just excels in creating a mood. It sticks to a Mediterranean-esque theme and a very distinct palette with an exceptional use of light and shadow. It is such a pleasure to look at this world and the things that exist in it that it's almost a shame there isn't a better game holding it all together. 
But, you know, like Yonder, you don't really need good traditional gameplay to go sightseeing. My sixth and final game is Alba, a wildlife adventure, which I, I enjoyed tremendously. You play as a small girl who helps save a wildlife preserve on a small island. The main mechanical drive of the game is very literally sightseeing, or more specifically, taking photos of and cataloging wildlife. Alba's world is the smallest of the six here, but it is immaculately designed, magnetic, rich with detail. It's less like exploring a whole massive world and more like taking in the sights and appreciating the finer aspects of your local town or your neighborhood. It's intimate and cozy and familiar, uh, but it's also kind of like a big playground, much like how a small child might see it. So there you have it, my six favorite sightseeing games on the Nintendo Switch. You know, when I was about eight or nine, I wandered deep into the woods behind my house, and I eventually came across a wrecked Volkswagen Beetle just just out there in the woods, a wrecked Volkswagen Beetle. And it was kind of exciting and thrilling and I love recapturing that feeling in video games. I think it's important to remember that exploration without extrinsic reward or an explicitly mechanical reward is a valuable mode of play all its own. Just seeing things is a worthwhile experience and the art direction and the level design that reinforces this often goes underappreciated. To this point, game journalist Holly Green had this to say in Pace Magazine, exploration games are inherently about the environment itself and that the relationship between that land and the player needs to be nurtured and respected. When I'm given a stash of collectibles to go hunt down, I don't feel like I'm being encouraged to appreciate the beauty of the world the artists have created. They're essentially extending the game's shelf life with artificial fillers, so I'll spend more time there whether I'm enjoying it or not. And perhaps sometimes the developers do not even mean to trivialize their own content by using collectibles, but it's a byproduct of not considering that relationship. The uh, yeah, exactly. With the popularity of photo modes and sharing functions on consoles, I think people are coming around, you know, to the idea that you don't need a power up or a treasure chest to make looking around and taking in these game worlds meaningful. And that's a good thing. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I would love to know what you think about these games, or if you have other sightseeing games you enjoy, please feel free to share those in the comments so that we can all read those. I want to thank you for watching, and until next time, you take it easy.